before we jump on the NiFi canvas, make sure you go and download the repo. The content for this uh, tutorial is going to be in NiFi and MangoDB. So if you already have downloaded, you navigate to your NiFi and MangoDB folder and you import this template onto your NiFi canvas. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. On the main canvas, make sure you click on the upload template. Choose the browse option and then navigate to where your Mongo template is located. Upload and template, you get a message template successfully imported. Next, drag on a canvas a template icon, select the template name MongoDB. Great, so now the MongoDB template has been imported. One prerequisite here is that you have access to a MongoDB server. If you don't have one, you can follow the link in the GitHub repository you see here. That will take you to a video to see how we can install MongoDB on your host. Now when the template is imported, you will see that we have a couple of items that are invalid. So these invalid components are the controllers that we use. So let's go ahead and see how we can enable the controller. From your main canvas, navigate to your operational panel here and click in configuration and then go to controller services. And here you see we have this controller services that are disabled. Make sure you enable them. The way you enabled it, click the enable button and he will show you all the processors that are referenced there. After you enable all the processors, you can go back to your canvas, do a refresh, and all of the items or all of the processors should be in a stop state. None of them should be in a disabled state or invalid. Another thing here, before we start with the tutorial, make sure that the variable that you have on the, on the canvas, so if you click right and say variable, you see here we have this variable called repo pad. This repo pad matches the location of where you downloaded the repo. This is important because we're gonna have assets there that they will be used into our demos. All right, so that's the, the initial config. Let's jump into the tutorials. In our first tutorial, we're gonna see how we can read data from MongoDB. I have here a couple of options. We can query record with a filter we can query the record with no filter and we can query using record-based approach. So let me go and explain each of them. Before I go and explain, I will go over the available processors that we have in NiFi for MongoDB. So here, if we're gonna order it, right? We have run Mongo aggregation, we have run Mongo, we have put Mongo record, put Mongo, put greetFS, put Mongo record, get Mongo, fetch greetFS, delete Mongo and delete GridFS. So you see we have nine components here that, that allows us to communicate and play with MongoDB. So let's go ahead and explore our first processor called GetMongo. So this GetMongo has the following properties. So we're going to talk about the client service or the Mongo URL. In this case, it's empty because we're using a controller service, the database that we're going to use for our MongoDB connection and the Mongo collection name that we're going to read from. And in this case, we're using a query. My query is going to be user the equal one. We also have the option of the query output to be stored in an attribute. But for now, we're not going to choose that. We're going to leave it in the content. We have the projection, so the field that will be returned by the uh, MongoDB result set, but we're going to leave it empty. We have the sort. If you want to choose what field we're going to use for our sort, we're going to limit how many records you want for elements to be returned, the batch size, the number of elements to be returned from the server in one batch. This is very important when you have massive collections. Results for, for flows. How many results to put in a single flow file at once? So in the date format, send empty results, we set this to false. So this option here, if the query executes successfully but returns no result, send an empty JSON document signifying no results. We can set this to false if we wanna say don't send nothing and nothing returns, or put it to true if you want an empty JSON. So let's go ahead and see how our client service is set up. So the way you do it, you can either create a new service or leave it no value, or you can select the one that's already there and we just enabled. Navigate to go to, and here, let's go over the configuration. Click on the view configuration, properties. And here it's very simple. In my example, the MongoDB is installed locally and is running on the default port. The database user, we don't have one, nor the password, and there's no SSL contact service. 
close this controller. And what I'll do in the same time, I have so what we're going to do next, we're going to open our P3 MongoDB UI. If you haven't done so, make sure you follow the Mongo installation on localhost. And there's also uh, an explanation of how you can install this locally. In here, we have a database. This is going to be our test environment. And this is going to be our initial collection. I have one record in. If you double click on it, it will take, it will automatically run the select query. So you can choose to see it in the JSON view, table view or tree view. So let's keep it as a JSON view. So right now we see we have an element with three rows, user ID, username, and email. Let's see what get Mongo does. We have a query here. The query attribute will have to receive a filter that MongoDB is aware and he can use for filtering. So in our case, we say user ID with the value one should be retrieved. And you see here we have user ID with the value one. So let's go ahead and run this query and evaluate the outcome. Click on this one and say run once. And if we go and observe, go inside the payload, we can see we're getting the ID plus the payload. So this is how you get one record from MongoDB using the filter option. What about with no filter option? So if you go here, we see the filter is empty and the rest, it stays the same. Run all. The result, the outcome is going to be the same in our case because we only have one record in that list. So if you go here and we evaluate, but this is an example of how you can query MongoDB using a filter or using no filter. How can we query using a record-based approach? So this is going to be a different, um, uh, I would say a different approach. So what happens here? In our case, processor, it's get Mongo record. And this one uses in its property a record writer. It means that he might read 10 columns, but the record writer will enforce how many items he will write back. And if you see here, the options are follow. The database name that we choose, the collection, and the schema that we're going to use to write the data out. So if you see here, I'm going to tell it to write the user ID, username, and email. So this is, by the way, this is an average schema for those who don't know what this schema is. I'm not going to go into detail of uh, what an average schema is. And the other option are similar to get Mongo from previous processor. Now let's go in and see what this record writer looks like. So let's navigate to it. Click on the configuration. And let's see how this is configured. So basically the schema strategy here has to be set average schema attribute. We, we don't have a schema cache for now. The schema access strategy is going to be use schema text property. And if you see here, this is the schema text property. You have to provide it with the same average schema as you saw in the processor. So let's save OK. And the rest stays the same. We told the only difference here, we tell him that print read JSON and the output grouping is going to be an array. Close this one, run the query now. You can see it run once and let's list the queue. Now the output is a bit different. We no longer get that identifier as we did before. So you see this ID because you know, we enforce schema on write. So this is a good way to use get Mongo record and write it in a way that you want to write it. All right, so this kind of close up our introductory on how you can read data from MongoDB using the NI5 out of the box processors. So to review, we went over, so how we can read one record using a filter, read all record because there's no filter in that collection, and then use get Mongo record using a schema on writing force. Right, I'll see you guys in the next story where we're gonna talk about how we're gonna write the MongoDB.